Good evening. Welcome to the National News Broadcast. I'm Kasuni Balachandran. And I'm Tilina Udayaratna. For starters, we take a look at tonight's top stories. The government decides to purchase 12,000 metric tons of gas as an immediate measure to face a shortage. Cases have been filed against 40 trade outlets which concealed gas and were sold at higher prices. A park with many facilities to expand scientific knowledge of children has been set up at the Sri Lanka Planetarium. Sajid Premadasa says the request of civil defense officials to retire after 22 years of service will be fulfilled. A special program by the police to apprehend those who violate laws at the presidential election. The United Nations felicitates Speaker Karu Jayasuriya as the most excellent diplomat in South Asia. An emergency situation has been declared in New Delhi due to air pollution. Moving on to those and other stories in detail. A garden with activities has been declared open today with the objective of expanding scientific knowledge of the children of the nation. It is located in the premises of the Sri Lanka Panatadium. President Maitri Palasirisena has declared open the park. The garden has been erected in connection with the birth centenary of one of Sri Lanka's reputed engineers, N.A.S. Kulasinga. Director of the planetarium, Arunu Prabha Pereira, has welcomed the president upon arrival at the premises. The president, after unveiling the commemoration plaque, has rather visited the technology park, which was constructed at a cost of 10 million rupees. It was jointly set up by the Central Engineering Consultancy Bureau and the Engineering Services Private Limited. It was engineer A.N.S. Kulasinghe who had designed the main building of the planetarium for the Sri Lanka Industrial Exhibition held in 1965. He was also the founder and the first chairman of the State Engineering Corporation. A.N.S. Kolasinga had been instrumental in extending his technological and innovative knowledge to many local and foreign constructions. State Minister of Science, Technology and Research, Sujiva Sena Singha, has also graced the occasion. The President has also joined to watch a weaving session at the planetarium. Are you born? Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe says that a new constitution will be drafted through the amalgamation of opinions of all with a unitary state. He was addressing a public meeting in Nelliadi in Vadamarachi today. Prime Minister Vikramasinghe said that the entire country had voted in 2015 and had ushered freedom for the entire country. We must safeguard freedom in the country by not allowing room for the arrival of white vans. They are unable to go forward further without achieving consensus in the north and south regarding the constitution. He further said that Sajid Premadasa, upon becoming the president on the 17th, will engage in the task of creating a new electoral system, unitary state and devolving power to the provincial councils based on the reports and proposals presented by former presidents Premadasa, Chandrika Kumartunga and Mahinda Rajapaksa. Presidential candidate of the New Democratic Front, Sajid Premadasa, says that the request of the officials of the Civil Defence Service to retire after a service period of 22 years will be fulfilled by a government under his administration. He made these remarks addressing a public rally in the Kartagaskilia bus stand in Anuradhapura today. <laughs> Several Pradesh Sabha members, including former chairman of the Galen Bindunavava Pradesh Sabha, H.E.P. Ratna, have joined the meeting extending their support to Sajid Premadasa. 
The presidential candidate of the New Democratic Front, Sajid Premadasa, said that it was their government which has made permanent the jobs of 40,000 gallon soldiers in the defense sector. The government has also devised a retirement scheme for them. The NDF presidential candidate further said that he will fulfill the request of the security services officials to grant retirement after 22 years of service period. He added that there are many kidney patients in the area as a result of the provision of inferior fertilizer and inferior chemicals by the previous government. He further said that under his government, they will not allow that to happen as they will expand the usage of organic fertilizer throughout the country. He added that special kidney units will be established in hospitals and the number of dialysis machines will be increased. He said that it was their government for the first time that has commenced the handing over of housing loans to kidney patients. Several public meetings to establish the victory of Sajid Premadasa was also held at the Vinayagar Stadium in Muliyavale, Mulathiu. At these meetings, Selu Ramalingam and Jaiji Vanjai Sundan, who had contested the Northern Provincial Council under the Sri Lanka Freedom Party, have extended their support to Sajid Premadasa. <laughs> Presidential candidate of the New Democratic Front, Sajid Premadasa, said that there has been a time of political deals in the past, but added that under his administration there will not be underhand discussions and agreements. An era which safeguards unity, sovereignty and territorial integrity of the country will be safeguarded under the name of humanity. He also said that the most massive development programs in the history of the Mulathiu district will be unleashed. Therefore, he has called upon members of all families to secure the victory of Swan on the 16th. Several public meetings to consolidate victory of Sajid Premadasa were held in Kantale today. Sajid Premadasa was warmly received at these meetings. SLFP member and chairman of the Moravagal Pradesh Sabha, Venerable Pulhin Gudu Barakmathera, and Seruvila electorate organizer Nalin Gunwardana, as well as SLFP Pradesh Sabha member Chandana Karnathilaka, have extended their support to Sajid Premadasa on this occasion. <laughs> Another public rally to establish the victory of Sajid Premadasa was held at the DSN Pura Public Stadium in Madhurigiri today. Several members of the Sri Lanka Freedom Party and Jonathan Abhimukta Peramuna in the Lang Lankapura and Dibulagala Pradesh Sabhas have joined the event to extend their support to Sajid Premadasa. <laughs> Well, around 40 sales outlets which have hidden and sold gas at higher prices were nabbed in raids conducted by the Consumer Authority. Measures have been taken to file cases against these errant traders and to conduct more raids in the days to come. 
The Ministry of Finance has taken measures to purchase 12,000 metric tons of gas as an immediate measure to face a shortage in the market. A ship carrying 3,600 metric tons of gas has reached the island for the second day. Another shipload of 3,600 metric tons is scheduled to reach the Colombo Harbour on the 9th of this month. A further consignment of 6,000 metric tons ordered under the immediate purchasing program is scheduled to arrive in the island within the next week. Accordingly, the gas shortage is scheduled to end within this week. Therefore, the government informs the public not to be unnecessarily disturbed over the issue. Police media spokesman SSP Ruan Gunasekara says that latest cameras will be utilized to identify those who violate election laws at the forthcoming presidential election. He made the remarks at a media briefing at the police headquarters. <laughs> Police media spokesman SSP Ruan Gunasekar said that it has been scheduled to deploy minor video cameras to monitor and video those who violate laws of the presidential election. He further said that the Sri Lanka police has received 71 video cameras and 321 jackets to be worn by the officials. He also said that these items have been handed over to the police by the PAFRAL and CMEV organizations. It has also been reported that the Navy has apprehended a stock of more than 200 kilograms of narcotics suspected to be heroin yesterday. The contraband was detected in a special search operation in the sea near Gaul. Minister Richard Badiuddin said that all minority national parties have come forward to extend support to Sajith Premadasa without conditions. He made these remarks, making a special statement to media in Vaunia. Minister Richard Badiuddin said that they have come to know today that the Tamil Arsukache has decided to extend support to Sajid Premadasa without any conditions. The Muslim party is based on their unconditional request, seeks the establishment of peace and coexistence in the country. Therefore, he said that all Muslim plantation and minority parties express solidarity with Sajid Premadasa. They who have been living in this country for more than 1,000 years are against any moves to divide, to conspire or to destroy the nation. They are against terrorism. Minister Rishad Badiuddin said that the Muslim society holds the view that maximum punishment should be given to all those who had extended support to Zaran, who had waged terrorism under the name of Islam. Presidential candidate of the National People's Power, Andhra Kumar Dizanayaka, says that in order to reconstruct Sri Lanka, an administration devoid of theft and wastage will have to be established. Addressing in a public rally in Piliandala yesterday, he said that his party will create such an environment if they are handing over power. <laughs> Presidential candidate of the National People's Power, Andhra Kumar Vistanayaka, said that both stages do not talk about frauds, as both Sajit and Gotaba are unable to make statements regarding halting of frauds. Both of these groups are unable to give punishments to the thieves, as both of them are thieves themselves. Andhra Kumar Vistanayaka further said that if Gotaba Rajapaksa says that he will give punishments to the rogues, the first person to enter the Valikara prison will be Gotaba himself. He will have to enter the cell and lock and say that he will punish the offenders. The NPP presidential candidate also said that those who ruled the country for the past 71 years have destroyed and pilfered state property amounting to billions of rupees. He has promised to build the country free of corruption and wastage. He added that a bright future could be given to children only through proper reconstruction of the education system. Poverty has to be eliminated. Both agriculture and fisheries industries will be turned into profitable ventures. He further said that a self-sufficient country will be established within two to three years upon handing over power to the party. Arunachalam Muruganandan, who is also known as Padman of India, has praised the statement made by presidential candidate Sajit Premadasa on the free delivery of sanitary facilities for women. He made these remarks in a note on Facebook yesterday. Muruga Nandan further said that it is pleasing to find world leaders focusing attention on the health and problems faced by women. Padman or Arunachalam Muruga Nandan of Tamil Nadu has shown the world that sanitary towels could be produced at one-third of the cost of the normal items. 
Manufacturing centers for the production of such items have been established in 23 states in India. He is hoping to expand his business to 106 countries in the world. Muruganandan, who has been felicitated by the Padmashri Award of India, was also included among the most powerful 100 persons in the world by the Time magazine in 2014. All presidential candidates are reported to be engaged in their election campaigns at present. These are some of the opinions expressed by them. Presidential candidate of the Frontline Socialist Party, Dumindanagamo, said that in the recent past some groups have accused the Muslim community saying that they were selling sterilized tablets in food and sterilized underwears. As a result, the Sinhalese have come closer to Godhabe Rajpaksa today. But Godhabe Rajpaksa is also getting closer to the Muslim people today. But when Rebel Nyanasara is not to be seen these days, Nagamo further said that they have designed wars and it was people who have to pay the price of such acts. Independent presidential candidate MLAM Hezbollah said that conflicts could be anticipated in the times ahead as a 10-year-old communal crisis is prevailing in the country. He also said that his aim is to guide the masses to elect a strong leader who is able to eradicate conflicts based on religious ethnicity and extremism in order to create an environment where the minorities are able to live along with the majority. Presidential candidate of the Okkumavasi Okkumarajavaru Priyanta Munihet Idrisingha said that people in a country with massive economic resources are living in sorrow. The reason being the irresponsible acts without understanding of those who call themselves as political representatives. Priyanta Idrisingha added that they have the ability to create a fully self sufficient and developed country in five years' time. Presidential candidate of the National People's Party, Mahesh Sinanayaka, said that people in the North and East focus special attention on their group. He added that for the past 71 years, they have given false promises to the people and dragged them towards a war. People in the North and East have been disgruntled by such acts. Sinanayaka said that therefore they have expressed willingness to join hands with them who are non-political. Presidential candidate of the Janus at the Peramuna Venerable Batra Mulesila Ratnathera has inquired whether any of the presidential candidates could give an assurance that the country would be spared from any further problems of extremists. The Venerable Thera also said that he hopes to protect the country upon assuming duties as president to fully eradicate the country from extremism. Well, the tourism industry in Sri Lanka affected by the Easter Sunday attack has now been restored. Our airport correspondent says that the arrival of the number of tourists has rapidly increased in the past few days. The reason being is the reselection of Sri Lanka as a tourist destination. Tourists are being welcomed in a gallant manner at the Katunayaka airport. Our correspondent further says that the number of air travels has also increased. More than 335 tourists arrived in a special aircraft two weeks ago. At the end of October 4th, a special aircraft from Russia carrying 1,300 tourists arrived in the country. Sri Lankan Catering Private Limited has won 27 medals at the International Culinary Expo 2019 exhibition recently. The company has won seven gold medals, 10 silver medals and 10 bronze medals. More than 1,650 participants representing many countries in the Australia-Asia region took part in the competition. The competition was consisted of a number of categories including live cooking, beverage and coffee divisions. This competition is one of the biggest culinary and hospitality competitions in Asia. Sri Lankan Catering Private Limited provides a quality around-the-clock services for many renowned airlines including Emirates, Qatar, Air China, Cathay Pacific and Royal Dutch Airline. Recognizing its unstinted contribution towards the Sri Lankan export economy, Sri Lankan Catering Limited was awarded the Presidential Export Award 2018-2019 for Best Exporter Award Processed Food Sector at 23rd Presidential Export Award Ceremony. Chief Executive Officer of Sri Lankan Catering Private Limited has stated that the productivity rate of the service has been doubled in the past four decades. President Maitri Pala Citizen says that it is a victory of the country for being able to conduct the presidential election campaign in an extremely free, fair and peaceful manner. The president made these remarks in a ceremony held in connection with the acceptance of credentials of three newly appointed ambassadors to Sri Lanka. 
The event was held at the president's house. Rabel Nash has handed over credentials as the new envoy of the Republic of Lebanon. Major General Chris Ease is the new High Commissioner of the Federal Republic of Nigeria to Sri Lanka. Denise Shalby has handed over credentials as the Ambassador of the European Union. The President, addressing the group of diplomats, said that he has been able to establish democracy in the country in the recent past. He added that this was due to political reforms carried out by the government. Parliamentarian of the Tamil National Alliance, M. A. Zumandiran, says that a decision has been taken to extend support to presidential candidate of the New Democratic Front, Sajid Premadasa, without any conditions. The MP further says that 13 facts presented by his alliance has been withdrawn. The decision was taken at a central committee meeting of the Ilangay Tamil Arzu party in Vaunia yesterday. Reports have been published regarding 13 facts alleged to have been presented by the TNA. Sumantharan further said that, however, none of these facts had been presented to Sajid Premadasa or any other candidate of the forthcoming presidential election. A media person has queried whether Sajid Premadasa has agreed to the 13 proposals presented by the TNA for presidential candidates. TNA parliamentarian M. A. Sumantharan has responded by saying that they have not presented the 13 proposals. He added that this was a separate issue and they have not presented their proposals to any other candidate as well. He also said that they have studied the election manifestos and the backgrounds of other two main candidates as well and that thereafter they have taken this decision. Presidential candidate of the Sri Lanka Pudujana Peramuna Gothabe Rajapaksa says that new measures will be adopted in the times ahead to uplift the tourism industry. He was addressing a public rally in Balapitiya yesterday. <laughs> Presidential candidate of the Sri Lanka Pudujana Peravuna Gothabe Rajapaksa said that there has been a massive economic development in the Asian countries from India to China. A significant middle class has been created in these countries. People in these countries are now engaged in traveling. Sri Lanka should be made popular among such tourists. Such tourists should be encouraged through the facilitation of immigration and immigration laws. If these measures were implemented, the private sector entrepreneurs will do the rest. Gotabe Rajapaksa added that the tourism sector should be also utilized for the creation of new industries. However, commitment and leadership is needed to engage in such ventures. Due to the inappropriate activities of the present government, many of the productive projects that have been implemented since the previous administration were halted and collapsed. He added that his manifesto has included measures to increase productivity and investment and to encourage entrepreneurs for higher investment activities. The objective is to strengthen the economy. When investments increase, production will also go up, and as a result, government income will also be increased. Gothabe Rajapaksa further said that they have presented a clear program to develop the economy. Vishal Saralavanu Badukramya Api Handun Nadino. Me me Tirum one api Namatat me artike dirimat karanata. Eharaha Iojana Vadivena kota Nishpada and a Vadikana kota Ape Adai Matraja Adai Mapita Vadikaragana Pulwa. And in Mewage Artike Dunukaranata Pahadili Vada Pilela Api Diripat Kala Tibeno. Another public meeting to establish the victory of Gotha Berajpaksa was held in Karandania Gol yesterday. Jay 
Yet another public meeting had also been organized in Karapitiya Gaul. Gota Berajpaks said that he will promise to turn Gaul into one of the rapidly developed cities in Asia. More tourists will be attracted and more business opportunities will be provided. The city of Gaul will be turned into a city that creates more employment opportunities, he said. The attorney at law, Shira Laktilaka, says that Sajid Premadasa, through his policy statement, has clearly stated on bringing the economy of the country in a new path. He made his remarks at a public meeting in Colombo yesterday. Attorney at law, Shira Laktilaka, said that we are talking about new politics and new United National Party. That was why a person of this caliber was presented to the poll. He further said that the UNP is talking about economic development by staying in the side of globalization. He also said that though anti-UNP peers always talk on development, they have no vision on development and the economy. They were also talking about poverty and justice. However, he said that Sajid Premadasa talks on both issues, that is generation of income and equality. Speaker of the Sri Lanka Parliament, Deshabandhu Karu Jai Surya has been selected as the most excellent diplomat in South Asia who has committed to democracy and honest public service. The selection has been made by the United Nations Friendship Organization. The honorary award was presented to the speaker in a ceremony in Colombo yesterday. He has been felicitated for the courageous and constitutional measures taken in his capacity as the speaker to establish democracy in the country in the recent past. The United Nations Friendship Organization organized the awards presentation in connection with the 20th anniversary of the association. The ceremony was held under the patronage of several local and foreign diplomats, including General Secretary of the Bharata Sansad Organization, Dr. Anil K. Singh, Lady Beverly Hill of the United States and Muni Aroni. Parliamentarian and attorney at law Das Rijasekar has issued a communique regarding a conference scheduled to be conducted by the organization to protect the SLFP at the Sukhadadas Indoor Stadium on the 5th of this month. He has released the communique in his capacity as the General Secretary of the party. The parliamentarian has stated that the Sri Lanka Freedom Party has decided to extend support to Gotabe Rajapaksa through approval of the Central Committee and the Politburo of the party. He added that the decision has been taken following several rounds of discussions with the Sri Lanka Podujana Peramuna. Accordingly, a joint election procedure has been adopted with the Podujana Peramuna and also separately as the SLFP. The communique adds that several organizers and district organizers expelled from the party are conducting press conferences against the decision under the name Organization to Protect the SLFP. Dasri Jayasekar further says that the act is contrary to the Central Committee of the SLFP and it is also an act of a group which betrays the party for money and privileges. The MP also says that therefore it is imperative to work with the leftist political forces in order to safeguard the party and the party members. On the same note, the National Conference of the Organization to Protect the Sri Lanka Freedom Party will commence at the Sukhadas Indo Stadium at 2 p.m. tomorrow. Former President Chandrika Bandarnaika Kumaratunga and former Minister Kumara Welgama will proceed with the ceremony to be conducted under the theme We Sri Lanka. Former Minister Kumara Welgam has said that 95% of the electorate organizers of the SLFP have urged not to abandon the party. Everyone is needed to safeguard the identity of the party. However, those who disregard such yearnings due to their power-hungry nature joined the Pohut to a party with the aim of securing positions. He added that the SLF peers who are against the decision are rallying around the SLFP today. He also said that he has been functioning as the electorate organizer of the SLFP for 38 years and there is no other senior member other than him in the party. And now to give you a stock update, the All Shares Price Index closed at 6,010.18 points, also dropped by 21.90 points, and the SLP SL20 index closed at 
2,981.81 points, also dropped by 8.53 points at the end of trading in the Columbus Stock Exchange today. The turnover was over 709 million rupees. And here's a summary of the market details of the Columbus Stock Exchange today. And before we wind up, let's have a quick look at the weather. The Met Department says that showers or thunder showers will occur at several places in western Sabaragamu, central, southern and Uwa provinces and in Anuradhapura, Kurunagala, Batiklo and Ampara districts after 1 p.m. Fairly heavy falls about 50 to 75 millimeters can be expected at some places in central Sabaragamu and Uwa provinces. Misty conditions can be expected at some places in western Sabaragamu, central, southern and Uwa provinces during the morning. Well, that's a wrap on tonight's Rupavahini English News. Join us once again tomorrow. Until then, good night. Good night.